Well, welcome to a beautiful 90 degree day in Florida. So today's little project, we're going to upgrade our club car battery charger, the old power drive battery charger has seen better days and it seems like it's taking longer and longer to charge than it used to. So I got to thinking about an upgrade. So we came across this company here, Craftsman Golf. That actually is that's the website right here, craftsmangolf.com. Really good deal. This thing is this charger is $229. It's a fast charger, but not only is it fast, it's smart and it has a trickle charger to it. One problem we run into with this style of charger, I call it a dumb charger. All it does is just charge wide open until the onboard computer, the, the what's called the OBC, tells it to shut off. And once it shuts off, it's off. So if we leave this car, we, we travel back and forth you know, between Kentucky and Florida. So we, this cart may sit for three or four months down here in, in storage. Even though I have it plugged up, you know, when we leave, we'll plug this up, it'll charge up and then shut down, but then it'll never recharge again unless I have someone come along, unplug it, plug it back up, then it resets. So that's kind of a problem. If you've gone very long, then your batteries go, go completely dead on you and may have to, you know, go to the expense of buying more batteries. But with the new style chargers, it's a smart charger. It'll charge them up, but then go into a trickle mode and maintain the batteries. I think it's got like three stage charge charging to it. So that's going to be a lot better option for us. So that way we can plug it up for three months, come back, and we'll have fully charged batteries ready to go. We won't have to worry about coming back to, to dead batteries with this. Now I understand the logic in this. Say for instance, I mean, if you had this in a garage or something or a basement, and you plug this up, you know, you want it to, to charge and you want it to shut down. You don't want it to overcharge. Like if you may have been around some car batteries, if you hooked up a charger to it and had it wide open, and you forget about it, you come back the next day and you got that horrible smell. You've cooked the battery; it's really hot, and you, you smell the hydrogen gas coming off of it. So that's something I understand the logic, but but back I guess back this car is 1998. So back in 1998, that's just the technology they had. So but nowadays we got something a whole lot better, and also the price to buy one of these new. The power drive new now, I think over $700. Even remanufactured ones, once it's been repaired, are around 300 bucks. And you can buy this, like here, for right for $229. It's real simple to install. It's, all we gotta do is what we call an OBC bypass. OBC, the OBC stands for onboard computer, and I'll show that to you here in just a second. And uh, But before I do that, I'm gonna do a little testing. I'm gonna measure the amp draw of the, of the old battery charger, then I'm gonna make the switch and then I'll do the amp draw of the new battery charger. Oh, and also, by the way, this comes with an 18-month 18, 18 warranty, too. So that's a pretty, pretty good deal. And this works on your club car precedents, 2004 through 2014, and also your club car DS, 1995 through 2010. So this is a club car DS that we're working on today. So I'll show you exa exactly step-by-step step how to make the changeover. Okay, so t test one. I got my little cord hooked up here and I got my kilowatt meter and I'll put a link to this kilowatt meter. Everybody should have one of these things. They're very handy. If you really want to know how much power something is using, you can hook this up and you can actually even measure how much an item is costing you because you can measure the kilowatt hours over time, over a 24 hour period. So you'll have an ideal house, how much like you're running a ceramic heater or air, air conditioner or something to that extent. So I got the charger here. We're going to plug it up. And we'll see what a sample draw is. All right, it's been engaged. All right, we're going to push. Okay, we're already on amps. So we're pulling a little over seven amps, seven and a half amps. But you see the meter is showing a little over ten. Right? It's it's going through its its setting up here. I noticed it does that when you first plug it up. It flickers on and off until until it calms down. So well, there you go. So it's showing a little over 10 amps going into the batteries, but here it's drawing seven. So now that we've done that, I'm going to uh, go through the change, bypass the OBC, we'll hook this up, and we'll see the amp draw difference. I think you're going to find a huge difference in the amp draw. That'll in, that should indicate the fact that this is going to charge much faster. Like I mentioned before, like if we plug this up, it's going to charge and charge until it finally kicks off. And I believe these, it won't kick off to the it sees around 58 volts because this is a 48 volt volt battery bank. Once it sees about 58 volts, then it, there's a little gray wire here. Oh, and there's your, your OBC right there. When you when they talk about the OBC bypass, that's the box, that little white box. That's the onboard computer. 
And you see here the ground, this is the ground cable going through the middle of it here. And it's, I guess it senses the, the amp load through there and it, it realizes at a certain point in time uh, when to, to disconnect. And that's what this gray wire does. That little gray wire connects to the small pin here. And that's what tells the battery charger to shut off once it's fully charged. But the thing is, once it gets, once it hits that mode, it, it will never come back on again. So after a month or so, your battery's slowly drain dead. And you come back to town, and you don't have a golf cart that you can use because your batteries have drained down. But with this new charger, that should eliminate that problem. So, uh, all right, so I'll get, we'll get to hooking things up now. All right, let's talk about what you get in the box. You're going to get the charger. It's really packed well so you don't get no damage in shipping. What's really cool, the cord is 16 foot long, tip to tip. So you've got plenty of cord. That's very nice to see. Simple instructions on bypassing the OBC uh, computer or the onboard computer. Because you got, uh, you got, and it comes with two different cables. Uh, this cable here is for the DS model, Club Car DS. This cable is for the Club Car Precedent. So we won't be using that one today. We'll be using this one. And here's the instructions, and I'll go step by step, I'll show you how to, how to do that. I'll tell you for what years it makes and everything it works with. Got your owner's manual, a little troubleshooting guide. So everything you need, get yourself going. All right, so let's get around here and start unhooking a few things. Okay, first of all, we want to be safe, because remember you're dealing with a 48 volt battery bank here. If you short something out, you're going to have a lot of sparks that you don't want. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to disconnect here in just a second. I'm going to disconnect that cable here. So get rid of that. But that, complete, that still doesn't eliminate all the dangers because if you have to get monk monkeying around and drop a wrench because he's too too post here you're not gonna like what you see so you you want to be diligent and be careful about where you lay your wrenches and stuff uh, another reminder is when um, if this if this has been on charge you know if you've been around a, a charging your battery and you kind of get that smell you, know, you can tell when they're, they're getting warm and hot and you know, that, that hydrogen gas is gassing off be very careful don't be unhooking any cables or anything at that point unhook your charger give it 30 minutes or so to, for all the gases and stuff to clear out because i've seen these tops blow off I'll tell you a quick story when i was a teenager i witnessed this um some friend of mine was i remember it vividly it was a dodge dart back in the 70s at some point in time and one of my friends was in inside the car with the ignition going it was just going click click you know just ratcheting that sound it wouldn't quite start my other friend was out beating on the battery trying to get the connection to and we probably had it on charger too trying to charge the battery up but he was wiggling the post trying to get it to make connection and right at that time I said man I wouldn't do that if I was you and I was backing up I was getting away from the car and I just just got that out when the whole top of the battery blew up because he when it sparked because it had been on charge and had those hydrogen gases around and he was wiggling that battery post got a spark and, it, and the entire top of the battery blew off hit him in the head we had to you know because the acid went in his face had him blinded we Got him in the trailer and stuck his head under the sand, got him all cleaned up and took, didn't have no long-term damage. But yeah, I'll never forget that day. So be mindful, respect batteries. If you smell that gases, uh, you know, wait, don't be disconnecting anything. Don't create any sparks until all those gases are, are gone away. So, all right, so now I'm gonna get my tool wise to do this project. All you need here is a, well, I got three eighths inch, quarter inch drive ratchet. Just so we can re remove this little ground wire. And then this is a four, for mine at least anyway. It's a 14 millimeter wrench to take the nut off that, that battery post right there. Yours may differ, but uh, just a couple tools, very minor. Okay, so you see, I removed the positive cables off that. You know, but, but still we got all these hot batteries, so you can be careful. Be dropping no wrench, wrenches around here. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this nut. So let me get my ratchet on that. Just a 3/8 drive. No, oh, let me back up. All you need here is a quarter inch drive ratchet, 3 8 socket, and just pull that nut right off. Okay, now be mindful, there's a small washer here. Don't do this in the grass, you'll drop that nut and washer in the grass, you'll never find it. And, uh, right there, so that. Now we have disconnected the onboard computer. That's all there is to it. Now I'll zip tie these wires back out of the way and tape them up and everything. Now all we've got to do is put our jumper on. So here's our jump jumper wire. This is our bypass wire. We've got a small end and a large end. Of course, large end goes on the battery post. Just like our drawing shows you, we're going to put this in place, just like it shows. So I'm going to put this cable here right on this little post, then route it around 
over here to the ground cable on, on the on the battery. So let me get started with that. Okay, so bear with me. I'm doing this one-handed. So put our cable on there like that. Get this little washer and nut. Try not to drop it. Let's see if we can do that. I actually got it. Good deal. And there's a little notch here on the back side where that cable wants to kind of hang down at the bottom. So make sure you kind of have it in that, that, little, that little notch in that plastic housing. All right, get my ratchet on it. Just get a good snug. So we got that done. Now we got to do is take this ground cable loose and put this on here. So let me tidy up this wire a little bit better. Yeah, be mindful of how you route your wire so you always have access to your fill caps. Put that on there. Tricky doing this stuff with one hand, but, but we're managing. All right. Got that snugged up. Got my 14 millimeter wrench on it. Now all I gotta do is hook up the positive cable and we'll be, uh, be ready to plug this up and test it. So last step, snug up this cable. She's good. Alright. Now let's plug up this new charger and see what we see. Like I mentioned before, you know, this one pin, this the, the one the gray wire goes to on the back side is not used. So to confirm that I, I, I took the connection apart and you can see here you've only got two pins inside. So that's not used at all. So let me stick that back in on the two hands and we'll plug it up. Okay, so you can see what's going on. I've got it plugged up to 110 volts. We've got red and green. So now we'll plug it up to the cart. And we should start charging. Okay, so now it's went to red and red. And the fan is blowing. And when it gets fully charged, it'll go to green. You'll hear it, everything shut down. Because it'll keep charging until it sees about 58 volts on the battery bank. Um, so let's check the amps on it. So you notice the difference? This thing is now pulling 11 amps on it because these batteries, the battery bank is, is pretty charged pretty well. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put my meter on I'll show you exactly what it is. Remember the old charger was only given 7.5 amps. So this should indicate this should get us a lot quicker recharge. So let, get my, let me get my volt ohm meter out and get some numbers. Okay, you see I got my volt ohm meter hooked up. And this is an awesome meter. If you want a really good meter, and I, don't, I know they're about 200 bucks, but it'll do almost anything you could possibly need. It's a SC440 field piece. I've been using this thing for years. In fact, a friend of mine's electrical engineer. I let him look at the specs of this meter, and he said for the money, it's a really good deal because you can check, uh, you know, air conditioning compressors, capacitors, measure inrush, all kinds of good stuff. If you're a troubleshooter and want to fix things, this one meter will do it all for you. Um, AC, DC, whatever you need. So put this on a DC scale. Okay. Remember, we got a 48 volt battery bank. We've already got 52 volts in it, so that's probably why we're not seeing. Remember, this this charger will charge up to 15 amps because there's no need to because it's almost fully charged anyway. So now let's put this in here and see what the voltage goes up to. So it's climbing. Just went up a little bit. And by the specs, I think it gets to a little over 58 volts. Once it hits that point then it will disconnect and then just go kind of like in a storage float mode, trickle mode, and maintain the batteries, keep them up. Now this beeping, I had to look this up because I was wondering why it was beeping at me because it's got, it's got this little arrow down here. So I looked up in the manual. The reason it's beeping, it's just warning you, you're, you're dealing with over 30 volts. Uh, if it's less than 30 volts, it doesn't beep. So there's nothing hooked up wrong. It's just letting you know, so hey, you're dealing with higher voltage. It's more than 12 volts you're dealing with. All right, so while this is charging up, I got to think about something. Uh, what am I gonna mount this thing? Because remember the old one, like I said, this, what's this thing called? The Club Car Power Drive Charger. It's kind of just a big dumb charger. All there's just great big giant transformer in there. Pretty robust. Not a lot of circuits and stuff in there to worry about. Uh, you know, in it, we always parked it right under here. Well, I don't wanna park my new fancy charger under here and let blowing rain get in there and get to it. Because as we can see, it's got some more delicate parts in there. 
Well, it's got capacitors. You can't see too well. But anyway, it's got capacitors and circuit boards and all kinds of stuff in there. That's what makes it smart. But it also, we want to protect it from the weather. So here's my plan. We'll see how it works out. So I, want, I figured the best place I'm at is up here high. Completely out of the weather. Weather will always be protected. But I have to come up with a shelf. So I, come, I, had, I got some all thread at the hardware store. And we get onto the other side. So I pushed it all the, way, all the way over here. I made my little marks. I'm gonna cut that off the hacksaw. Then I can slide them back, put nuts on both sides. I'll have me an in instant little shelf. And then I can zip tie my wires down the sides and all that stuff. Should work out for a pretty nice clean install and everything will stay nice and dry and give me a, a long life. So that's the plan anyway. Okay, so before I cut this, I was gonna point out what size it is. So it's a 3 8 diameter, 16 threads per inch. 36 inches long because I'll put links to all these parts I'm using below the video. So I'm gonna make my cuts and we'll see if we can't uh, make make us make ourselves a shelf. Okay, so here we go. This is a uh, trial one. You kind of get the idea of how I've got this all thread put in here and I've got these two nuts jammed together to make it tight. And I've done the same thing over here. You just got to get creative as you're doing it because you got as you slide the rod through you got to get the nut started and start spinning it as, as we go. So I'll try to explain that. Let me, let me get one started here. Okay, so you get the idea. So we, we got the all thread started here. We're going to push it through. But we just start, start spinning this nut and keep pushing. It's being stubborn. There it went. So we gotta keep doing this until we get this past here. So we'll keep pushing, pushing, like just a little bit more, pushing. Okay, so now we're past. Now we can come back the other way. Same way as that gets started, and I'll get my other nut on there. All right, so just keep working as as we do. We'll get it where we want it to be, just like this one. Just to give you an idea of what we're doing. It takes a little bit, but it ain't too bad. Oh my God! Sweet, sweet. Looking good. So I have to get that. Take this one over here. We'll jam the two nuts together. Good and tight. And we have an instant shelf. How's that for sweet? And then these two together. I like it. I like it. Camera is on. So they like that. Okay, let's do a test here. See if we can't make this work. I got it got ready center. You see got these little notches. You see the little notches here? My plan is to use these notches in between these two pieces of all thread to hold it in place. There's a notch one. Get it centered up. Ta-da! Locked in place. So we can zip, zip tie our cords down here. Make it look nice and neat. And we're up high. We're, let's get plenty of cooling. It stays nice and dry. No water can get to it. I like that pretty good. Patent pinned it anyway. So I took the cover off because I wanted to point out to you the back side of the OBC. If you want to know what the OBC is on your club car, that's it right there. That little box with all those wires. Of course, by unhooking that one ground wire, it disconnects all that. So it's no longer in use. Now we've got the new... Uh, uh, smart charger installed. So I just want to point, point that out where it was and, and, and what it looked like. There it is. OBC. Oh and also another thing I want to point out is if you want to know what year cart you have right there it is. It's right there is A98 so this is a 1998 club car. This is the DS. 
Okay, on the, on the, wait, the wire that we're not using no more, that wire loom, I just zip tied it right here. I'm gonna just take this cable and turn around and tuck it right back down in that wire loom so it's protected, good and safe. Nothing's gonna touch. And that way you don't have to worry, don't have to worry about it dropping down, getting dragging on the ground or anything. So you wanna be sure and tuck that up, get that done. Okay, you can see here we're almost fully charged. If I remember right, what I think is at 58.8, there's a certain number it hits. Once it hits that number, it will disconnect. So here's just shortly, it should break connection. Because you can hear the fan running, it's doing its job. You can see our amp draw, our amp draw has dropped off to about four amps. Now just a minute ago I had 12 amps, so I guess it knows it's about ready to shut down. 58.3, 58.4. Well I just walked by and, it's, and it kicked off. And you can see the, I think it got up at like 58 volts, point something. And then disconnected. Because that annoying beeping just let me know I got over 30 volts on, on the meter. But it's doing a great job. I really like this, this setup. And I like how I got this set up here and I just gotta figure out a, a way to tuck my wires when I'm not using it. So let me get a strategy for that and we'll be able to wrap this little project up. And just so you know, when it's fully charged and happy, you'll have a LED one is red, LED two is green. So I tell you, you know it's fully charged and you're ready to go to the golf course. Well, I think I got a plan. I'm just gonna leave it like this. Just un unhook that wire, it comes off real easy. And when we're not charging, I'll just throw them up here in the dash. I got my little bungee cord on there. Remember, you got like 16 foot of cord, meant it tip to tip. So when I charge up, all I gotta do is quickly plug into that, plug up here to the front, plug it in the receptacle, and we're off off to the races. Get it charged back up. Anyway, let's take you inside, and I'll show you where you can buy yours at. Okay, here we are with the computer. Right there's a the URL. I'll put this below the video. But you can see they make these chargers for all kinds of brands: Club Car, Easy Go whatever you need all different types of battery banks so uh, check out the website check out the product I think you'll be pleased and you'll save yourself a bunch of money so again thanks for watching have a blessed day see you, bye